the headlines, the issues impacting you, all on This Week in Cincinnati on 9 in Your Side. From cars to buses and the streetcar and the international airport, the mayor of Cincinnati is a major player in the transportation systems we use every day. We're talking this morning to Cincinnati Council Member and Mayoral Candidate Yvette Simpson joining us from uh, this for this segment, I should say, WCPO reporter Pat LaFleur, who also covers transportation and economic development. We'll get to roads and potholes and things of that nature. Let's talk about the streetcar up front. Okay. Um, nice launch, nice ribbon cutting. Trains been packed on certain weekends and certain events. There's been a major issue with the timing of the streetcar not being reliable for people to actually say, I know the train's going to be here at this time and I can get to work or wherever I need to go. How do you solve this problem? Because so far it's been several weeks since the company was basically put on task to say fix this and it's still not fixed. Well, some things are coming along. I mean, I try to remind people as frustrated as I am about kind of the issues and I don't think that you're going to find someone more frustrated <laughs> as one of the champions of this project. It's only it's been less than 6 months. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing some of the kind of the real life glitches happening. Um, and I think as what we're what we're working with our contractors on is fix it and fix it fast as opposed to kind of we're going to work it through and see for a couple weeks. We really don't have that kind of time because this project has met so much controversy anyway. The last thing you want. The last thing you delay. want is to have sure. more delay. So I think um, certainly the weekend ridership has beat projections. That's great news, mm -hmm. uh, first of all. I think the daytime ridership will increase uh, with more kind of predictability. Uh, and we're working through that. My expectation is by the time we get in the heat of the summer, this thing should be rolling pretty well. Part of it is one, the streetcar is in regular mixed traffic. And so some of the, you know, the messages that go up on the boards that tell you when and where, you know, they get tripped up because if it gets stopped at a red the, light. Somebody's parked on the tracks and that's another issue. We've also got to do the traffic impact study and we, there was a bit of controversy. The mayor um, tried to stop that from happening and we were able to get a kind of a veto proof majority mm -hmm. to get the traffic study done. We haven't done a traffic study downtown in 20 years, which means our signals aren't timed correctly. So you get a lot of traffic stuck on Walnut Street, which is the main thoroughfare for the streetcar. So we've got to fix that. For me, getting all the way down to eight to 10 minute headways, which is above what we originally goaled, is how we get daytime ridership. Because people have to be able to get on, go get lunch, come back, or get on from the parking garage, go up to work. It has to be reliable. I think that we're gonna figure it through. I think part of it is just people getting used to it being there. We got a lot of people who are parking on streetcar tracks, blocking the streetcar, uh, and we've gotta work through some of that. Well, to follow up on your question, or on Craig's question, um, you know, we've had this frustration that you were talking about mm -hmm. um, as the streetcars launched over the last few months. Um, <clears throat> so moving forward, mm -hmm. how do you convince residents living in the outlying communities of the city that aren't necessarily using the streetcar? How do you convince them that it's worth the money to uh, expand it to their neighborhoods or is it even worth expanding out to those neighborhoods? Well, I'll tell you, when I was on the campaign trail last time, people had a lot of negative things to say about the streetcar. But when I said, what if it came to you? They all said, that'd be great. So I think part of the challenge that people have with the streetcar in the outlying areas is it doesn't serve them. What we know is that if we have more people riding from the two busiest employment centers, uptown and downtown, we'll have more daytime riders and people from uptown will come downtown and vice versa. Um, you know, the, the road system and the highway system wasn't built overnight. Uh, every major metro who we can consider ourselves competitive to has rail and they're being aggressive and we're not. So we make a cho choice not to expand it, we're making a choice to be less competitive. And if that's a choice we want to make going into, you know, a, a place where we're kind of starting to see some momentum from early investments, I mean, that's a real choice. So I think it really is about making sure that because I'm all about regional transit and making sure we have at least a few rail options that go beyond the city's borders that go out to the outlying areas. So I think what we say to individuals is, do you want it to come to you as you think is something that's important? Uh, if so, then we got to do that one step at a time. Sure. So. Um, jumping off of that as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, more than 90% of Cincinnati commuters use a car. So how do we balance, you know, the, the substantial cost of rail projects like this, infrastructure projects like this? How do we balance providing that for people who would like an alternative with monumental projects like the Western Hills Viaduct, for instance? How do you mm -hmm. balance that? Well, I mean, you have to be able to do both, right? And most major cities do. 
Uh, the reason why people use cars is because our infrastructure is built out for cars. Uh, but that hasn't worked well for everybody. People who can't afford a car are pretty much stuck. Uh, so we have to look at the reality of one, people need to be able to have transportation that does not involve vehicles for people who can't afford it. Millennials just don't want to drive. Baby boomers don't want to drive. So it's a transition for us. I think we have to continue to serve cars, but we have to look at the future, which is if you look at major cities, they're investing significantly in rail, and we have to be competitive, and that's what we need to do. And that's going to be a challenge, of course. If your yeah. campaign continues. You can go to YvetteSimpson.com for her entire platform. And this week in Cincinnati, we'll be right back.